In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of protection. God our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love you have shown to us, this one family of South Sudan and USA. We are happy that you brought us together in unity. Today we are under the umbrella of love that you have shown us. We thank you for all these gifts. May you continue to bestow your blessings upon us. We remain in love, united as one family, as one country. God, we could know any words to express our happiness just to say thank you. Send your Holy Spirit to guide our hearts, our thoughts, our mind. Guide us. Show us the path where we are heading to. Restore back the love and unity we have. Let us be the beginning of love in our country. God, these signs that you have shown us is a great sign. We ask you to continue giving us that signs. And let the guiding star that you have given us guide us wherever we are going to. God, we are going to have our small meal. Again, let it be the sign of unity and love among us. Again, I'm asking for your blessing. Bless our country. Bless us. Bless the head of our state. Guide his heart and mind. Bless our ambassador and his staff because they came here to represent us. Let them be the fruits of our love to the whole world. I ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> 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 I've come to the U.S. with the YALI, Young African Leaders Initiative, and I've come with the leader, civic leadership track together with my other colleagues. When I was in the U.S. here, I've learned so much. Um, I've learned that people have to be servant leaders. We have learned how to work with the, the U.S. systems. In the mornings, we used to go for academic lessons, and then in the evening, we used to go to site visits. Sometimes every Thursday, I remember, we were in Portland State University. So every Thursday in Portland, we used to go to an organization and see how they work and see how they do things. Um, so it was actually a great experience. I have learned so much here in the U.S. I was placed in a Portland State University in Oregon State. It was a great experience working there. Every morning we used to have academic lessons, and then in the evening we used to go for side visits. I had an experience of knowing what is in the U.S. If it wasn't for this program, the YALI program, I would not have that chance to come and see the U.S. lifestyle. And then one thing I noticed is that there are problems in the world. There are general problems in the world. But it's up to us to see what perspective, in what perspective do we see them. When I was coming here, I was so expectant, over expectant of what to see here. I thought the U.S. is just a place like had no issues. But they had issues like we have in South Sudan. But what do we take out of it? We take the positive from it and go and apply it in our country, which is what is happening. We have to help our country. We have to help what is going on in South Sudan. So here in the U.S., I am privileged to see that here there are systems that are already established, and they have taught me how to use these systems. I will not take everything and apply it back in our country, but I will just take what I like and what I see is relevant to what I'm doing back home. I deal with communities, I deal with women empowerment, I deal with child protection. So I'm going to take this and go and try to see this, to, to, to do civic engagement back home and go to help people. Um, viewers from Australia, America, South Sudan, and across the world, my name is Yar Mignon Mayen, uh, coming from South Sudan. I'm here on a Mandela Washington program. It's a program uh, created by President Obama. And we came as 1,000 young African leaders. And I'm from South Sudan, and we are here with 14 colleagues, seven girls and seven boys from South Sudan. 
we're so happy and excited to be here. We came here on six weeks leadership program. We got placed in different universities. Um, after six weeks, we have come to Washington DC for a presidential summit. And we are so excited. We went to our embassy today. Our ambassador invited us to the house. We had a nice dinner. We speak about what's happening back at home. Uh, it was really nice to, to be here with our families, as in our ambassador and the colleagues that are working here, they receive us well. And I'm currently speaking from the ambassador house. It's really nice to be here. We are happy. We've gone through a lot of training, we've gone through a lot of experiences. We've met with uh, American diplomats, business people, NGOs, and all the experiences that we've gained from here. We are taking it back home to help our people and to develop our countries and to help us in different uh, career background that we came from. Um, my name is Ashebit Nicholas Philip. Um, I'm one of the fellows for 2016 Mandela Washington Fellowship. It has been a great experience for me. It has been a great learning for me. And I want to pass this message to our young people in South Sudan that uh, being a leader is not necessarily being in a position of government. You can be a leader from your community, you can be a leader from your family, you can be a leader from your local church, you can be a leader from your community. So it's, it's all about providing services to the people. And I think the principles that I've learned that the youth could also benefit uh, from South Sudan is being a servant leader, where you sacrifice your own status and, 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 and contribute towards the development of the society. You mentor your fellow colleagues, and, and that's very important because leaders who fail to mentor their, their uh, young ones or their fellow brothers are said to be selfish. So leaders is all about sacrifice. Uh, Nelson Mandela has shown us a great example of a servant leader who sacrificed himself to be in prison for 27 years and later he liberated um, uh, South Africa. South Africa became free. So it's, it's about being in position. You can be a leader from anywhere and you can still make a contribution to the society. The second message I want to pass to our colleagues is that um, no amount of conflict, especially the young people, will solve any problem. And dialogue is a very important tool that can help us to move forward. I, I, I learned that from one of our professors where we had an exercise of assessing yourself like in conflict, what would be your responses. And I think we learned out that um, not necessarily uh, responding violently can make a change to your society, but if you can sit down and talk about the issues, you negotiate, that's the most important thing that can make a, a change in your society. I also wanted to uh, pass this message to the youth, that changing your attitude about how you look at things. In most cases, we tend to judge things before we even analyze whether they are. We have those stereotypes about people. We have those stereotypes about tribes, especially in South Sudan. That is not necessarily true. When I came to America, what we know about America, that there are people who are very arrogant. There are people who don't welcome people. But when I came here, it's a different um, a story altogether. They are very respectful. It's, it's a good experience, actually, to feel how good America is. So sometimes in our communities, we try to generalize issues. So we have people who are good, we have people who are bad. And, and, and it's good to just analyze the issues before you finally make your own judgment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the South Sudan Mission staff in Washington, D.C., uh, I'm very happy. All of us are happy and excited uh, to receive these wonderful young guys, girls, and boys together in Washington. Uh, they came here for this uh, leadership program which is supported by the United States of America uh, government. And I hope that uh, their being here was very successful. They have uh, really uh, captured what they have uh, come to learn from here. Uh, from the briefing that they gave us, it indicated that they have really learned a lot uh, in all the institutions that they, they passed uh, through uh, in the Congress, in the White House, in the State Department, in the states and universities. So this is a, a very good chance.
for this group of young uh, people uh, to learn uh, leadership traits. Uh, and I think uh, they are going back to South Sudan with add value to whatever they are going to do in their respective uh, professions in South Sudan. Uh, they are a very promising uh, group, and I think uh, the youth in other sectors in South Sudan will learn a lot from what they have uh, learned here. And uh, we encourage them uh, to go to South Sudan and uh, make a positive contribution to South Sudan according to what they have uh, gathered here, what they have learned here. And I think all of us have learned a lot from what they did here in, in Washington. Uh, and I wish them uh, good uh, times in, uh, in Washington and also I, I wish them good uh, future, uh, the young, bright uh, uh, people who are going to make impact in South Sudan future. Hello, Yali Network members. Thank you all for being such an important part of this extraordinary group of young leaders who are making such a vibrant contribution to Africa's future. In just two years, the Yali Network has grown to more than 200,000 members all across Africa. And every day, you all are coming up with innovative solutions to some of the world's most pressing challenges, from addressing climate change, to expanding civic engagement, to empowering women and girls, which is an issue that is near and dear to my heart. I stand here as the President of the United States and the son of an African. Michelle and I have always tried to instill in our girls, our daughters, a sense of their heritage, which is American and African and European, with all the strengths and all the struggles of that heritage. We took them to Africa. We wanted to open their eyes to the amazing tapestry of history and culture and music. Uh, we looked out from those doors of no return. We stood in the cell where Mandela refused to break. And as President, I've now visited Sub-Saharan Africa four times, which is more than any other U.S. President. And even as Africa continues to face enormous challenges, poverty and disease and conflict, uh, I see a continent on the move. You have one of the world's fastest growing regions home to a middle class that is projected to grow to over one billion consumers. You are more connected by technology and smartphones than ever before, as I can see here today. <laughs> uh, Africa is sending more of its children to school. You're saving more lives from HIV AIDS and infant mortality. And while there's still more work to do to address these challenges, today's Africa is a place of unprecedented prosperity and opportunity. So over the past seven and a half years, I've worked to transform America's relationship with Africa so that we are equal partners. As so many Africans have told me, you want trade, not aid. Trade that supports jobs and growth. So, We've been working to boost exports with Africa. We're working to promote good governance and human rights, to advance security, to help feed families. Earlier today, I signed a new executive order so that we're doing even more to support American companies that are interested in doing business in Africa. Yeah.